Hi everyone, welcome to Luis Cisneros YouTube channel and today's polymer clay tutorial is about how to make a scorpion part one. So the, the cool thing about this piece is you can leave it as a figurine, you can put it on any surface or you can use it as a pin and it can be a tie pin or it can be a lapel pin and this is just to show you how it looks like uh, as you can see and in this case if you decided to wear as a tie um, pin is gonna grab uh, from the collar so the clothes actually grab the collar at the shirt as you can see it in here and it goes a little bit under the tie so that's the way that I can hold but this is in case you want to use it as a pin. Uh, I think it looks really cool. I wanted to show you how it looks like. And I'm sorry that it's a little bit shaky, but it was really hard to film it. But anyways, this is how it looks like on. This is a material that we're going to need for our project and just to create the scorpion. And we're going to start with our wire. This kind of wire you can find in any art supply store. Just make sure that it's for baking and it's a copper one. Also, uh, you're going to need a proportional chart just to know how long and how wide and also the proportions from the side view. So this is on my Facebook and website. Also, we're gonna need needles. Just make sure if you wanna create it for a pin. If not, you can have it by yourself or with a pin. Then we're gonna need clay. Just make sure to choose a color you like and also different colors to create the different tones. We're gonna need some uh, tools, uh, just as complete too. And also these two guys, the translucent liquid and also the gloss if you want that finish. We're going to start creating our armature for this we grab the wire and we measure against the proportional chart. For this we just measure uh, from the tip way to the end, the end of the tail. And I always leave like half an inch extra and fold it again and we have how much wire we need. Now we bend the wire just to get the shape that we need. Just make sure that you always measure it right in the middle so we know how much. If you have extra wire, you can cut it, but it's better to have extra and cut it than then have not the length that we need. Also compare it to the side views, and that way we have a three-dimensional armature. The armature is like the skeleton, it's gonna be our base. Then we do the same with the legs. We're gonna do them separate because we're gonna need extra wires. So we measure them and we just fold in the middle so we know how much it's gonna be. Always leave an extra inch or half an inch of wires and that way if when you're like bending it or also wrapping it around, you lose some wires. So it's better to have extra than then using a piece. The legs are getting bigger and when you go uh, towards the tail, so that way you, you see that the front legs are shorter and then and gradually they start getting larger to the back. So just make sure that you have that tail and you have extra wire. After we straight our wire, we're gonna start wrapping it around the bodies and that way we can fix the legs. For this, we're gonna measure against the proportional chart and also we're gonna use the pliers and that way we can wrap them around and they can really, really be really tight so they don't move.
Then you bend the wire in the same position as it is in the proportional chart just to know how much we're gonna left for the body. So you do the first bend leaving the space for the body. You do it on one side and then you do it on the other one. Try to be symmetrical. We repeat the process for the second pair of legs. Then the third and then the fourth. Then we measure against the proportional chart for how long it gets the first part of the leg and then we do the second bending. I use the pliers because it allows me more control in where I bend the wire. So we do that, um, especially since the legs, they have so many turns and so many shapes. So that's the reason I use the pliers and I do that. It's going to be a total of four um, turns in the leg, so where we're going to bend the wire. Just as you see, it's to start going gradually. So all the bends that we do in the wire, they have to look the same in all the legs. They just go to the back and it gets like um, identical and symmetrical in the same way. Just to the back, it starts increasing and getting larger. Make any adjustments to the wire as much as you need and just make sure that everything is symmetrical and everything looks so good because remember this is going to be our base for our scorpion. So at the end it has to stand by himself and also it has to look symmetrical too. Just measure with your pliers against your thumb and make sure that everything looks okay. And don't forget to cut the extra wire. For our project, we're gonna need four different tones of the same color, and I'm gonna use the second darkest just to create the, our base. I'm gonna follow the proportional chart to create the body, and it's gonna be a flat one since it's gonna be at the bottom. After I create it, I integrate it into the armature, pressing down and trying to get as much as I can pressing down without showing on the other side the wire. We're going to start creating using the same tone and ellipse that is going to be the tummy of our scorpion. So it's going to be under. And we're going to follow the proportional chart for that. 
and as you can see we just uh, use the needle tool just to start blending it into our base that we put in the armature also with the uh, same tool that is the needle tool we're going to start creating these sections that uh, the scorpion has in, in the tummy so these ellipses uh, that we're putting on they're going to be separated too since also we're going to put another tone between them that is going to be a lighter one as you can see we we'll start with the big one and then it's going to be a smaller one another ellipse that is going to be beside it so we just measure and then we we'll start creating these ellipses we start blending with the needle tool and our uh, second ellipse and also it helps us uh, creating with the base that form of um, those sections that uh, it has in the tummy. So as you can see it start looking like patty that is on the bottom and we create another one and uh, this is going to be a third one and it's going to be a smaller and with the needle tool we help to create that gap that it has between each patty and we can also create the dotting tool um, just to smooth and integrate those sections. Then we create the last one that is going to be where our tail is going to start growing and this one as you can see it is really uh, smaller than the rest of them and for this is the reason that we follow the proportional chart and we just uh, smooth and integrate with our fingers or with the needle tool and the dotting tool until you don't leave any marks. And between those sections then we apply a lighter color. Then we're going to start creating what is under the uh, head and this is going to be a half ellipse. It's going to have a clear line on the, on the bottom but it's going to be rounded and just on the top. And we're going to integrate it and we're going to use the dotting tool just to blend it without leaving any marks. Then this, uh, we're going to draw a line right in the middle just to start creating the pattern that it has and this is going to be helpful because it's really symmetric. So one side I already have the design that we're going to create and it's really easy. We we'll start drawing the first one that is in, in, in the middle inside and we're gonna create that line and that section so as you can see I just draw it from the middle to the end where the uh, straight line was and then I create that line I just draw it first and then I go deeper and deeper when I know 100% sure that I have the shape that I, I want to this is gonna be in the proportional chart so in that way you can follow it after I do that one, I do the one on the top and I just follow the design and it is just first I'm really delicate because I just want to draw it and then I go deeper and deeper knowing that I got the shape that I want. It's easier to do first one side and then I follow the other side I just I mirror it so that way I have the symmetric part. Then I'm going to draw the third one that is going to be uh, in the exterior beside the inside part and again I just draw it really carefully with my needle tool and then when I know that I get the shape then I press harder and I make, I make it a deeper and I start shaping it. 
after I use the dotting tool just to widen that gap that I just draw with the needle tools and that way I start shaping even deeper and I start creating the 3D model. I make sure just to go through all the lines and that way they have the same dip. Then with the needle tool, I just smooth and I don't leave any marks. Then I'm going to create three sets of uh, spheres and this is going to be what is going to be on their uh, the head. So, and the first one I'm going to use is, it is the smaller one and this is the one where one, our first leg is going to come out. So it's going to be just beside the head and as you can see I created just a tube and then I go around our wire and then I start blending it with the dotting tool. Then in the red middle area that is going to be a lighter color, this is, um, this is going to be our uh, third tone, I'm going to create the design that is between the head and the rest of the body and the patty. So this design is just like an arc that it has a, like a straight line and then I create a second line as you can see in the design and again I use the needle tool just to draw it and just to follow the pattern that the scorpions has on there. After I draw it then I go deeper into the marks that I left and that way I can create the 3D part. So just make sure first you draw it really carefully and really smooth so in, in case you made a mistake you can erase it really easily but when you got it then you can go deeper so in that way it creates that uh, a this 3d model so you have you continue the middle line all the way to this arc so in that way it goes to the design then on the tummy also in the patterns they has uh, these lines too that is like another design that it has. It's like this pattern has different sections and we're gonna create these lines. First we draw them and then we cut them. 
Um, then uh, we're gonna create a different tone for those lines and those designs that it has. Um, use a lighter tone just to make the difference and follow the design that it has. As you see, I created from a little bit of clay um, tooth and then uh, it is almost like a thin hair. And then I put it like on um, between the line or on the gap, I measure it. And then with the needle tool, I incorporate it. And with the dotted tool, I blend. You can use your fingers just to smooth those lines. Then we continue with the with the design that is under the head and as you can see I created these cones that are, they go under the head and I incorporate with the dotting tool. So I follow the design of the proportional chart and I make them equally. When I do this I uh, create the spheres or the pieces of clay that I'm gonna use in pairs and that way I have the same size and I follow the proportional chart and again I use just during tool just to create the shape that I want. As you can see I start with one side so in that way I copy the other one. It's easier in that way to be symmetrical and also comparing the pieces and the shapes that I want. I create another cone that is bigger and then I put it just under the second one. And with the dotting tool, I grab the section. So this is the sections where the legs are coming from. So I need to create the gap where we're gonna insert the rest of the clay. Then we're gonna use the same tone that we use for between those paths and between the lines. And we're gonna just make, a, it's like a boomer, boomerang, I will say, it, that has that shape, but we're gonna really flatten it. And um, after having that shape, we're gonna create two pair of combs that are they're gonna be bigger. And this is just to create the last detail that it has. So I put it between the arc and the lighter tone that we have and we create our flat boomerang that's the only way that i can name it this shape and they're going to be two identical ones since uh, we're going to mirror them and i put um, the third cone just really carefully and i create a line where it finishes so that way i can put my boomerang and i create these lines with the needle tool so this looks like it is something that it has under the belly and it is a pretty cool design. So as you can see, then I put the third cone and <clears throat> I press really carefully with the needle tool. And again, this is just the section where our legs are coming from. See, I put the cone, I draw a line using the needle tool just to know where it's falling and then I put the boomerang and then I um, press against just to set it up and I draw those little hairs that it has and then I put the cone on the top pressing down. So this is scorpion, you can leave it and use it just as a figurine or you can create a lapel pin or a tie pin. So if you want to create the pin, you just insert the needle really carefully without affecting the shape and just put it right in the middle in that section. Then you can bake it. We're going to start creating the base of our claws and for these we just use a cylinder that we're going to grab the wire for our claws and we're going to incorporate it into our dried um, 
clay the body that I have already made and we use um, one side at first and then the other side and trying to be symmetrical and um, we use the dotting tool just to help us create the shape that uh, we want and again this is just base So now as you can see um, we finished putting our bases for the clouds and then I'm gonna start creating the mouth for this mouth that also has like um, these claws that I were gonna create but these ones if you want to make the, uh, the tie pin these are the ones that are gonna hold our scorpion in place so try to make them larger and um, so uh, we draw like these all shapes and then we'll start creating and drawing the inside part and we use the dotting tool just to create some texture then these claws they're gonna go on the top beside our uh, claws so just really carefully without affecting the shape we're gonna start incorporating to the body then when our legs are growing in that, those gaps that we left, we're going to start putting the same tone that is between the uh, padding of the stomachs and that way we're going to start putting our legs. Then this technique that I found out that is really easy, especially when it's thin wire and thin um, parts that we need really close to the wire, we, what we do is first we cover the entire wire with a really thin layer of clay and we bake then we're gonna use a translucent liquid just uh, um, to attach uh, the clay to uh, this side as you can see i already did one side of the legs so we're gonna start making the other side so and this is because it, the legs are really skinny and if you attach it right away into the clay uh, to the wire uh, it's gonna start swimming and it's not gonna hold the shape so i find it when you attach this first uh, it stays really easily and it's easier to manipulate at least this works for me so we apply the, the liquid SQP just all the way around so that way the clay that I we're going to apply really holds into it since it's going to be really thin and not big pieces. And then we're going to start building uh, with clay our uh, parts of the leg. So we start with the uh, first big uh, piece that is almost like just like a round. So um, around the part and we create a cylinder and then we grab it, the leg and with the needle tool we start creating the shape follow the proportional chart. Then between each part of the leg it shows a lighter side that is like almost the inside and it seems like in each part uh, it follows that rule. So we use the same tone as we use between the padding. Uh, we use a small piece of clay cylinder with the, we wrap it around and we use the needle tool just to apply it. Then the next section is larger, so we use a larger piece of clay and what I create is actually a flat version of it. So first I uh, measure and then I, I flatten it up and then I wrap it around so it is easier to manipulate. And I use the needle tool just to texturize and create the shape that I need. Then I put more um, 
translucent liquid so that way it holds the clay in place and I put the lighter tone between the next section that we're gonna create and the section that I, I just put then um, to create a 3d effect I add a um, darker tone um, the one that I, we use to build the legs over the top of the red and to cover that piece since that's how the leg looks like I use the needle tool just to create some texture on the lighter red tone then I use the uh, liquid sculpte just to add the next section Another way to build it is I create the shape with the clay and then I cut in the middle right away and I just grab it around and I incorporate it and I use the needle tool just to start smoothing the part that I need. Then following the proportional chart, I created the other piece that is covering the top part of that uh, section. Actually, with, um, because I have to research about the scorpion and I saw the anatomy and like the different parts, it reminds me so, so much to lobsters and like crabs like how even the legs and the different parts look like so it is really useful if you haven't seen a scorpion just to see a lobster or a crab anyways then i start to texturize after getting the shape then i add uh, with the lighter tone uh, again in between those sections i add these and i texturize with the needle tool and i incorporate with the dotting tool both sides and that way they are symmetrical then uh, I'm just gonna add this section that is covering on that side the red part and the lighter tone and then I'm gonna draw a line so that way it creates this section of the leg and I use the dotting tool just to make it deeper and I do it on the other side too and I do exactly the same we add more liquid to the cured uh, clay so that way it really holds it then because this section is really thin what I'm gonna create at first is the lighter tone so I separate the two sections so I know how much clay I'm gonna need then I create a rectangle a flat rectangle uh, so in that way I I can wrap that section I wrap it and then I use the dotting tool just to incorporate it and texturize. Then I do the same with the last part. I create the rectangle and then I wrap it and then I texturize. Then at the end of the legs, it has these claws. Uh, so I just created with the same lighter tone, 
like uh, the claw and then I, I incorporated so it's almost like a tear um, shape and then I use the needle tool just to cut it and create the claws So what do you think about this video tutorial? I hope you like the first part. I will post next part next week. And let me know if the scorpion, if it is your favorite insect, if not, which other insects you want me to create in polymer clay. Don't forget to subscribe to make more videos like this.